I think it's going to be a paradigm shift in terms of uh, the way we are all thinking about ESG. Um, how are we disclosing our strategy? How are we uh, measuring it and enumerating it, putting the results out? Joining me today is Carol Saman, Vice President, Corporate Counsel and ESG with Health Peak Properties. You were on a panel here at ReWorks looking at the SEC's proposed climate rule. Could you talk a little bit about the potential impact this will have on REITs as well as other public companies? I think for REITs in particular, um, you know, it is going to require a lot of cross-functional um, initiative uh, from teams because a lot of REITs are, are doing great things around ESG and disclosure, um, and they're putting out really good financial reporting statements with the SEC, but there hasn't really been cross-pollination between the two areas of ESG reporting and financial reporting, and so, you know, I think you're going to see REITs having to do some heavy lifting around getting teams to speak to each other, um, whether it's the accounting team, ESG team, legal team, internal audit, um, all, all of the different teams who work on ESG and financial reporting and really understand what the other does. Um, I think REITs do need to start speaking about that. I think there are a lot of unknowns um, around this rule if it is finalized. It's, um, it's broad, it's very prescriptive, and yet there's a lot of gray area um, in terms of how we will report it. We don't have precedent to rely on. Um, we don't know how results are going to be. There probably will be some variability. And so I think for a lot of companies, it is a little bit of a wait and see approach, but um, I think it's gonna be a paradigm shift in terms of uh, the way we are all thinking about ESG. Um, how are we disclosing our strategy? How are we uh, measuring it and enumerating it, putting the results out? And so I, I think it's, it's really going to signal a shift. Now, as we talk about this rule, what should REITs keep in mind about how the SEC views liability and materiality? The SEC has various rules on, on liability. Um, these rules require the data to be filed and not furnished. And so there's a little bit of a distinction um, in, in SEC reporting land. If, if data is filed, it's incorporated by reference into various SEC filings. And so companies will essentially be on the hook if there is any material misstatement or material omission in that information being published to investors and stakeholders. And so that can be, you know, there's a question as to what is material um, in ESG world. For financial metrics, we can often point to some rules of thumb or some benchmarks to say something is material, right? Maybe it's um, a certain number of pennies to earnings or it's a, a dollar amount, uh, you know, some threshold. We don't have that same rule of thumb yet in, in the ESG world, and so what some investor might consider to be material um, in terms of climate disclosure is, it, it, you know, it could really vary. And so we're a little bit in a gray area, um, but what the liability does is if it's filed and not furnished and there is a material misstatement or omission, whether intentional or unintentional, it can result in a variety of um, of sanctions or fines for a company, and that can range from an SEC investigation to um, civil penalties. Um, you know, in for some SEC rules, there can actually be criminal penalties as well, but I don't think ESG reporting will, will rise to that level, but it can also open the door to litigation, um, shareholder actions, if there, you know, if there's a material misstatement of information or an omission, we didn't include something that was material. In addition to the proposed SEC rule, there are other issues that REITs must consider. Can you talk about some of the state and local level climate rules that are in play? Yes, it's it's a it's um, a quickly evolving landscape, and so um, you know at the state level you have different jurisdictions that are starting to come up with their own rules, whether it's climate or it's something related to, you know, it might be energy level reporting or it might be um, even like diversity reporting within within buildings. Um, uh, so California is one that has um, proposed legislation that's pending. It has not yet advanced. It actually just failed to advance a, a couple of weeks ago. Um, I think it's the third time. But uh, that rule would have required 
any company doing business in California with revenues in excess of one billion dollars, so public or private companies, um, to report scope one, scope two, and scope three emissions. So in a way, it's actually broader than the SEC rules would have been uh, because it applies to both public and private companies. It's any company who does business in California with a certain amount of revenues, and it would have mandated scope three emissions reporting, which the SEC rules don't require if a company hasn't set a target. And so it, that was potentially a very broad set of rules at the state level. Hasn't advanced yet. We're still watching to see. I think a lot of states are waiting to see what happens with the SEC rules um, before pushing their own agendas. But I imagine there's going to be a little bit of a trickle-down effect. So once you have federal level rules, states will leverage off of that and maybe add a little bit more to it um, for their own requirements. We've also seen a proliferation of of local jurisdictions, so at the city level um, or even the regional level, imposing their own sets of disclosures. And so uh, Boston comes to mind, Cambridge, DC, New York, they all have their own sets of disclosure rules. And so it is a little bit of a, a minefield, if you will, you know, in terms of navigating it. Um, companies really have to pay attention.